Hey everyone, my name is Deep Bhattaria. In this video, we're going to be discussing cycle desynchrony. So let's get started. So cycle desynchrony is defined as desynchrony in terminating a breath or cycling a breath. There are two types of cycle desynchrony, premature cycling and delayed cycling. And the issue with cycle desynchrony is time. Inspiratory time. The inspiratory time is either too long or too short, but it's up to you to figure out which one it is. So let's first discuss premature cycling. In premature cycling, the patient will continue to have inspiratory effort after the ventilator has cycled off inspiration or terminated the breath. And one distinguishing feature about premature cycling is two breaths will be delivered without exhalation. So let's take a look. So premature cycling looks different in volume assist control ventilation and pressure assist control ventilation. So here I'll have a ventilator delivered breath and here is patient inspiratory breath. So the green line here designates what the ventilator has delivered. However, the purple line here shows the patient continues to inspire even after the ventilator has cycled the breath. So let's try to interpret the waveforms here. First in volume assist control, what's your target variable? It's flow. So as a result, you have flow here that's your target variable it has been pre-selected and looks exactly the same in both breaths. So let's talk about the first breath. The first breath here, flow is delivered. As a result, the pressure increases. And let's say the patient gets a mandated 500 milliliters. Now, the ventilator has cycled the breath off, so the flow will stop. However, the patient will continue to inspire. So as a result, another breath will be delivered. Now take note right here. There is no exhalation phase. As you can see, it's two breaths without exhalation. So since the patient has not expired, there's a large amount of volume still in the lungs. However, a second breath is still delivered. So an additional 500 milliliters is delivered. As a result, if you have 500 plus 500, you have an entire liter inside the lung. And as a result, you can imagine the pressure will skyrocket. And then finally, you have the exhalation phase. That's where you lose all the volume inside the lung. And that's when the pressure goes down as well. So this is a way to identify premature cycling and volume assist control ventilation. Let's contrast that with pressure assist control ventilation. What's your target variable in pressure assist control? It's pressure. So as a result, the first breath, let's say 20 centimeters of water is delivered because that's your target variable. As a result, the dependent flow will give a volume. You get 500 milliliters in your first breath. Now, remember, there's no exhalation phase here. So as a result, the pressure inside the lung is still high at around 20 centimeters. So when the second breath is delivered, it targets 20 centimeters. However, like I said, the pressure is still high inside the lungs. So in order to achieve 20 centimeters of water, requires very little flow, and as a result, very little volume, let's say 300 milliliters. So that's why the second breath here in pressure assist control has lower flow and also has a lower volume associated with it. So this is why in pressure assist control ventilation, the second breath that is delivered, the volumes are much less than the first breath. Contrasting that with volume assist control, if there is no exhalation, the second breath essentially doubles the amount in the first breath. And that's how you tell the difference and identify premature cycling in volume assist control ventilation versus pressure assist control ventilation. Now comes the main question. How do we fix this? So what do you think we should do? As you can imagine, we want to improve synchrony. So the only way to do that is by increasing inspiratory time. Take a look at the green line here. If you extend that green line out, you will help promote synchrony. Now, in order to increase inspiratory time, you have to know what is the mode of ventilation that the patient is in. Increasing inspiratory time means manipulating different variables in different modes. So my next question to you is, how do you increase inspiratory time in volume assist control ventilation? Remember, in volume assist control, the cycle variable is volume. We can't just say increase inspiratory time in volume assist control. 
because time is not a variable in volume control ventilation. So just to recap, remember flow equals volume over time. You manipulate this equation, time equals volume over flow. So if you want to increase inspiratory time in volume assist control ventilation, you either increase your tidal volume or you decrease your flow rate. These are two variables that you can manipulate on volume assist control ventilation. Now, how do you increase inspiratory time in pressure assist control ventilation? Remember, the cycle variable for pressure assist control is time. So essentially, you can just increase the inspiratory time. So this is how you address premature cycling. You increase inspiratory time. And depending on what mode of ventilation the patient is in, you manipulate those variables. Now let's talk about delayed cycling. Delayed cycling is completely the opposite. The patient tries to expire while the ventilator is still in the inspiratory phase. So let's take a look. Green is the vent delivered breath, and here's the patient breath. So the vent is continuing to give a breath here. However, the patient has already started to expire. So as a result, this will promote some dyssynchrony. Now, what are some key features to look for on waveforms when trying to identify delayed cycling? Most notably, you will see a positive notch deflection in the pressure scalar, right here. Remember, a negative deflection in the pressure scalar means the patient is inspiring. However, a positive notch deflection in the pressure scalar means the patient is expiring. Let's take a look at the, the flow waveform here. Now the patient starts to expire right around here. So as a result, you get a small expiratory flow and you can see a small loss of volume because the patient has lost some volume when they're expiring. Then finally here, the ventilator cycles the breath. So that's where you get the maximum expiratory flow and you lose the majority of the volume. So that's why the waveforms look like this in delayed cycling. Now, how do we fix delayed cycling? Quite the opposite. We want to decrease inspiratory time to promote the synchrony. Take a look at this green line here. You just want to decrease inspiratory time there to match the patient's inspiratory effort so then the patient can exhale appropriately as well. And this will help improve synchrony and get rid of delayed cycling. Now, how do we decrease inspiratory time? Again, it depends on the mode of ventilation. So if somebody's in pressure control ventilation, what do you do? You just decrease your inspiratory time. Inspiratory time is your cycle variable. How about in volume control ventilation? What do you do there? You have one of two options. You can either decrease the tidal volume or you can increase the flow rate. This is how you address treating delayed cycling. Okay, we have an interesting waveform here, a little bit more advanced, but Let's try to answer the question together. First, what's your target variable? What's your mode of ventilation? What's the issue here? And how do we fix it? So why don't you try to answer these questions and pause the video now. Okay, so what's the target variable? The way we assess the target variable is look straight at the flow scalar. The flow here looks like a dependent variable. It doesn't look like something I've set. And you can see the amplitude of the pressure is all the same. So as a result, the target variable is pressure. So what mode are we in now? If you said pressure control ventilation, that's actually the number one wrong answer. And let me tell you why. So what is the cycle variable in pressure control ventilation? The cycle variable is time. So meaning if we were in pressure control ventilation, the inspiratory time of every single breath should be the same but it is completely different here. So you know you're not in pressure control ventilation. Instead, this is actually pressure support ventilation. And we can confirm that because the patient now doesn't have a respiratory rate. All the breaths triggered are dependent on the patient. So now, what's the issue here? So let's read each scale or left to right. Here, there's no issue. You come here and you see a positive deflection right here. This is dyssynchrony. So the question is, what type of dyssynchrony is it? Is it a trigger dyssynchrony, target dyssynchrony, or cycle dyssynchrony? It's towards the end of the phase. This is a cycle dyssynchrony. 
Now, which cycle dyssynchrony is it? Is it premature cycling or delayed cycling? Remember, a positive notch deflection in the pressure scalar means the patient is expiring. So the patient is already expiring while the ventilator is giving a breath. Therefore, this is delayed cycling. Now, how do we fix it? So remember, the only way to treat cycle dyssynchrony is by changing the time. And particularly in delayed cycling, you need to decrease the inspiratory time. However, in pressure support ventilation, there is no variable of time. In pressure control ventilation, the cycle variable is time. So how do we manipulate time in pressure support ventilation? What is the cycle variable in pressure support? The cycle variable is flow. So if you remember in pressure support, the inspiratory cycle off or the ICO is a way to manipulate time. So if you increase the ICO, you will decrease inspiratory time and vice versa. If you decrease the ICO, you increase inspiratory time. So remember the way to manipulate time in pressure support is to manipulate the flow cycle. So let's say you increase the ICO to 40%. This is 100% here. As a result, 40% will be around here. So the breath will cycle right around there. That's how you decrease your inspiratory time. And that's it for cycle dyssynchrony. Right, join me in my next video where we'll be doing practice questions over and over. We'll just keep reading ventilator waveforms and interpret them and try to strengthen and solidify all the concept that you've learned so far in addition to probably learning more nuances about the ventilator when it comes to troubleshooting the ventilator and addressing dyssynchrony as well. It'll be good practice. Thanks a lot.